We're live. Welcome to the Deal Champs podcast. I'm your co-host, Stratton Brown. Go ahead, Dino. I got Dean Rogers here. What's up, everybody? Jason Pritchard here. What's up, boys? I'm excited for this one, man. First of many. It's the first first one. Let's go. Let's go. (laughs) Hey, we're going to get this figured out as we go, but uh, we're all excited about it. This is something we've talked a lot about. We wanted to get together, do a podcast um, in the spirit of getting people together and celebrating um, you know, people doing deals and pushing through overcoming obstacles, doing deals with other people. Like we're all, we're dudes all about collaboration and, and being around growth minded people. So I'm, I'm fired up for this. This is going to be fun. Bro, it's going to be really fun. Let's cover some quick announcements. First thing we got, we're looking for an intern for the deal champs podcast. And then Dean's personal business internship program runs out at the end of this week. Do you know? Yeah. So this is the last week we're taking applicants for our home helpers group internship program in central California. So, um, yeah, if anybody's interested in, we've had a lot of people apply. We've had a lot of people reach out that didn't apply, right? They're not going to get accepted. We want action takers. So, um, yeah, if people are still interested in listening, please apply. For the deal right, champs podcast next- intern. Strat, what are we looking for? Who's a good yeah, fit for that? We're so looking, that way we know. Who's the right person? So we're looking for someone who like wants to be in our sphere and be surrounded. Because, I mean, me and Jason both learned from Alan. And the best thing I ever did was spend a year and a half working for Alan for free. That's right. And so this is legitimately being able to be in our sphere. Who knows what it will evolve into. But like be able to see how we think, how we operate our businesses, how we're doing bigger deals. I mean, even me being on this podcast is awesome because I get to be with Dean and Jason. I get to learn about what they're doing. And so if you are looking to surround yourself with people who are really pushing to go to the next level, I pay lots of money every year to get in rooms like this. I'm, I know Jean, Dean and Jason do as well. And so it's an easy way for you to get access to us. But we're looking for someone with a little bit of social media experience. And because we need someone who can help us with the copy, setting up the podcast, scheduling guests, handling our social media of all that. Um, and then eventually the on the podcast as well. Like the value for someone like that who's – either getting started in their career or want to get access to more people. You know, we've spent a lot of time networking and building our businesses to get to where we're at. We're, our goal is to be networking and meeting with other high level people. So the intern coming in, they're going to get the opportunity to be reaching out, communicating with those people, building relationships. I mean, we could go on about the story about, um, you know, Jacob and and who who did video with you and all the new relationships. Uh, That's a story for another day, but, yeah, it's all about building those relationships and, and growing together. Yeah, proximity oh, is yeah. power. Reach out to Stratton, guys, if, uh, if you think you're going to be a good fit because we definitely need some help organizing and keeping us in line. So, yeah, if you think, uh, if you think you're a fit for that, reach out. Yeah. And then our next one, don't forget to like and subscribe and follow all of us on Instagram and then share it with your friends. If it brings you any value, share it with your friends. So go and like on YouTube. Make sure you hit that button, subscribe button as well at youtube.com forward slash deal champs. Go leave us a five star review if you listen to this on the podcast app. And then if it brings you any value, share it on Instagram, share it on Facebook, talk to your friends about it, help us go viral. We're going for, did we say a thousand subs in the first month? Yeah. So, I mean, not everybody knows this is a brand new podcast. Uh, we just, you know, put together the YouTube channel, the Facebook group. And we're looking for engagement. We're looking to interact with people and have a lot of good conversations. So if you go to youtube.com forward slash deal champs, you can subscribe. We'd really appreciate that. Um, Same thing with Facebook. If you go to facebook.com forward slash deal champs, you'll see uh, the new Facebook group there. We want you to join. Um, And that's where there's going to be opportunities for us to submit deals. And it's going to be fun. We're going to really build this out to where we're highlighting a lot of different people. And then we're looking for people to like vote on who's the champ. Right. And there's going to be some prize award at the end. So um, it's going to build on itself and it's going to be fun. Awesome. And then we do have a couple events coming up. So we have our event down in Visalia. Dino, please cover that one. I don't know the address. Yeah. So we've got, uh, we've got our next central California real estate investing group meetup, which is going to be a social event in Visalia, California. 
Uh, we'll get all the details specific to the location, the date and time. We're looking towards the second half of February. I think we said February 23rd. Is that correct? Yeah. Thursday the yeah. 23rd sounds, sounds right. Yeah, Thursday the 23rd. So that's when we're looking to do the next meetup. Um, it's a great venue. I just was on you know, FaceTime this morning with one of our team members walking it. Beautiful property. They do weddings there and stuff like that. So the, the venue itself is going to be great. It's going to be a great opportunity to network. Um, we're going to make sure that we have fun. We're going to have music and all that kind of stuff. It's all about socializing and networking. The power of networking, I mean, you're literally, and we'll probably say this a hundred times on this podcast, you're literally one relationship away from a lifetime's worth of income, a lifetime oh, of just opportunity from one relationship. So imagine you want to meet as many people as possible. And these things are important, guys. Like this is how Dean and Stratton and I, we make ourselves accessible to a lot of people. I know you guys get a ton of requests for your for time and coffee and lunch and all these things. And it makes it hard for us sometimes to say yes to all of that. So we're trying to do things like this podcast and these events to be out there and make ourselves accessible. So if you guys want access to us, talk to us, pick our brains, those are the best times to do it because we go there, we'll stay until the last person is there and we yeah. answer as many questions as we can, guys. And then we'd love your interaction. If you guys are watching this, tell us where you're from, tell us where you're watching. We'd love your interaction here in the Facebook comments, YouTube comments, all of it. Talk some shit, whatever it is, we'd love to hear it. And then we have our next event that all three of us will be speaking at down in L.A. on Saturday, on January 28th at the Dealmaker Summit with our good friend Alex Camacho. Super excited about that. And we're going to speak on stage with a bunch of other killers. Yeah, really good lineup over there. Who else is going to be there? Max Jimenez is speaking. Who else yeah, is, I know uh, Max Alex is. is going? Will's going. So it should I be. I got a uh, good buddy, really. Indar from Hawaii. He flips, you know, gorgeous houses in Oahu, Hawaii. So um, there's a really good lineup of people there. All right. So let's dive into this. Um, we're, so we're going to cover some news topics because I think one of the benefits is seeing like how we're making our decisions now and how we're thinking and like making sure our businesses are staying in tip top shape. So for, I think we should start with the first one. Um, Dino with the story of institutional buyer. Yeah. So real quick, uh, appreciate the comment from Facebook asking about youtube.com forward slash deal champs question mark. Uh, I guess technically, cause we're just getting started here. We got to get to like a hundred subs until we can truly, truly customize that uh that <laughs> that url um so the youtube channel if you search deal champs in youtube you should be able to find it i'm gonna see if i can post this in here let's see um let me you see if i can yeah, it might only see. go to the youtube stream though it won't go to the facebook stream we might have yeah. to just put it out on facebook I'm and gonna, if you're watching I'm gonna... this share it on your profile so I've got it right here. I'm looking at this. Uh, we'll go ahead and post it in the chats later. I've got it right Let me see here. Let me uh, uh, mute myself watching this stream. All right. All right while we're waiting, let's start okay. with this one then. I'm ready. Let's, let's okay, dive ready? in. Yeah. All right, sweet. There's the link. All right. Tell us about that story. I think that one is really powerful because I haven't heard that from any type of institutional buyers yet. Yeah. So I got a call from a guy who um, works for one of the biggest institutional buyers in the entire nation. And they're buying literally all over the entire US in most of the major states, major markets. And um, I have sold this one hedge fund that works. And, and of course, like I said, they're all over the nation, major markets. But in Central California, there's only one major hedge fund that buys. Yeah. And so I've got a relationship with them, sold them you know, a um, couple handfuls of different properties. And they had one particular acquisition guy who was just an absolute animal. Got to give him a shout out, Scott Steinbeck, total beast. Yeah. I mean, this guy, if I got him on my team, I mean, there's no saying how many more deals. We might double our business alone because this guy is that tenacious. He's that good. Um, and he's just on top of everybody. He's, he's like the leading sales guy of their entire company because he's just an absolute animal on the phones. And he called me, uh, I want to say it was this past Saturday, and just told me he was back in town because 
he he had told me before they sent him to Texas to start yeah. buying multifamily. I remember so that. he left yeah. town, started buying multifamily. Um, he had actually told me that he ended up moving to Florida and covering Florida and Southern California, or I'm sorry, uh, South Carolina, and North Carolina. And he's now moved back to Southern California. So he's going to be buying in California again, given the green light. And uh, so we were catching up, talking about good old times, talking about buying some more deals together. And I'm so thankful. I usually remind myself good questions I should have asked after I hang up the phone. But thankfully, I asked and had you know the opportunity to. I said, dude, what's, what's your guys' thoughts on the market right now? Like, what's the sentiment of one of the biggest buyers in the entire nation? Like, what are you guys thinking? And he said, the past six months had been a steady decline. The market, you know, they've been buying less. The market had been, you know, slowing down. But literally one week ago, they had an all hands on deck sales leadership, sales executive leadership, the entire sales organization got together on an all hands call. And the overall topic was, let's fucking go. Like, let's buy. Mm. <laughs> and to me, I was a little bit surprised. You know, I was expecting like, oh, you know, we're optimistic or, you know, we're kind of like trying to keep things uh, conservative right now. But no, it was like, yo, let's go buy. Let's go buy some stuff. Um, and I, I asked, I said, well, like, what makes you guys think you guys should go buy? Do you guys think the market's going to get better? He said, well, they said they think the market's pretty much hit the bottom and it's, it's going to be improving from here. Now, of course, no one has a crystal ball, but those were the direct words from top sales guy from one of the biggest institutional buyers in the nation. If they're giving that message and they have all that data across all the different markets, they see opportunity right now. Does that mean that the market is going to be amazing tomorrow and it's going to be on fire like it was the past couple of years. No, we probably won't see that for a long time. But is there opportunity right now? Yes, there's opportunity right now to get good deals in a market that will allow you to come out good on the other end. So for me, that was really encouraging. Um, I got excited about that because me not having all the same data that they do, I'm, I'm trying to look at my own crystal ball and try to figure out what it's saying. And I feel optimistic. I can tell you right now, December was slow. December was slow. We got deals under contract. Most of them got pushed out on their closings. We had two deals closed, cash in the bank. It was a slow month for us, but we had deals under contract. The month of January, we're you know, a little past halfway through. We already have 10 deals under contract. We already have four deals closed. This Friday, we should have another four deals closed. Like we're making good money in the month of January and I'm seeing sellers more willing and able to sell their properties right now. And we're getting good deals. We're not getting half ass deals. We're getting large margin deals. Mm. So for me to see it firsthand within literally a couple of weeks kind of shift and also see one of the institutional buyers say that, I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited right now. And I'm going to jump in really quick. So I feel like one of the things that I always try to caution myself on is being overly optimistic, right? Because I, I think we're in the business of buying, fixing, flipping, and wholesaling houses. So I think it can be easy to look at some of the data and be overly optimistic, right? And so I'm always looking for secondary opinions. But one of the things that I, I pride myself on, guys, is just not overthinking things and just following the lead of people that have been there and done that. So you hit it on the head, Dean. I feel like if you have an organization that's the size of this buyer, all the resource, all the brain power, all the data that they have, and if their indicators are good, I can't help but take that as something positive for people like us. You know what I mean? So I, I feel like it's a good sign. And, and we have a similar experience to you. December was a slow month for us. December was really slow oh, yeah. month for us, right? I mean, we were averaging five, six deals a month. That was a volume for us. And I think we had two closings in December. And yeah. now we're starting to see some of the activity pick up. I know we're going to talk about rates here in a little bit too. I think that's helping. Um, but it's, it's, uh, it's a good sign for us, especially in our market to see a buyer that size, like basically say, hey, we're going, going all in. So I'm excited, man. I think, they're, I think they're a little wrong. I think that sellers have come to a realization 
that like they can't get top dollar for it anymore. But I think we have yet to see pain that indicates anywhere near a bottom. So right? when like do you we, think the pain's coming? Second half of this year. Like so like all the major so that long, huh? Yeah, well, if you if you look at it, like all the major like tech companies have made like their big layoffs. Those people, and it's been like white collar layoffs, and so like you don't feel that pain for a little bit. They got to eat through their savings. They got to spend a little bit more money, and then they got to start going to credit cards. And then we start to see like the actual like that trickle down effect of them not putting money and infusing money in the economy, and then that's where we're going to start to see a shrink down even more. I think it'll be the second half of the year. I think now. More than anything, like the sellers have come to realization that like they can't just rob you for their home anymore. But overall, yeah, I think now is a good time. But one thing that I and I will take this to my grave is during COVID, Jason kept buying and I bitched out and Jason made a lot more money than me. <laughs> 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 so I would say keep it with a grain of salt, but I don't. I don't want this to be the bottom at all because over these over this next year, it's going to give us an amazing opportunity as we're trying to buy bigger and bigger deals to pitch terms because the sellers get it. They're like, yeah, bro, I couldn't buy this on a fucking seven eight percent um, interest rate either. I'll carry the note for you, and even if we can get it on a three year term, but we get into it, we don't have to deal with an annual probe from a bank. That's awesome for us. Like yeah. right now, we have two under. Oh, we closed on one owner finance. We have another one owner financed. We have a verbal on another one, owner financed, all at one of them is nine percent interest, but I think that we're buying it at seven something. It's worth like two million, all right? So I was like, yeah, I don't give a fuck. Um, and then we're still negotiating on two more owner finance deals. The only way we've been able to do that is because rates have been the way they are. And so, I mean, I hope that it's not the bottom because then it, that essentially means like we missed our big window to really go in, add some serious wealth of what we're doing already. Yeah, I, just I don't, don't know. I don't know how I feel. Like I don't. I don't think. I don't know that I want to see a bottom yet either. I feel like being able to buy deeper that would be nice opportunity for guys like us, right? Um, but then the other part of me feels like it would be nice to just have a normal market because it is. I'm not going to sit here and act like it's not painful when you've yeah, guys. We've got inventory that's sitting, dude. You know what I mean? I know, Dean. You guys are more probably wholesale intensive than we are. But we've been primarily like a flipping company. I'd say we're like 70, 30 flipping to, to wholesaling. So having yeah. product that just sits, regardless of whether your, your mindset and stuff is dialed in and whether you have the reserves or not to kind of see it through, yeah. that's that could, that's a painful to sit there every day and just kind of- You can't help to have that. that fear creep in. Like as much yeah. as we have like reinforced our mindset to be strong and push yeah. through and- you know, I can accomplish anything. I can overcome any obstacle. Like you still have those human reactions. <laughs> like yeah. you can't help but have some fear creep oh, yeah. in. Like for real talk, December, I won't say I was scared, but like, I didn't feel good. I was uncomfortable. Well, <laughs> like, I don't you know think we I mean? closed one. In we didn't yeah. close one in December. Yeah. Like we I did just didn't feel comfortable. Closed. We're used to closing like eight to 10 deals in a month and, and money looks good. And yeah. December didn't look good. <laughs> didn't feel nice at all. Uh, so those are, regardless of having reserves in the bank, regardless of knowing that we're in a, a good position financially and the future looks bright, like it doesn't look good. So regardless, I think for anybody, I'd agree with you, Jason, like I, I like a normal market. Um, I like people clearing the deck and sitting on the sidelines. Cause I've seen in January, just in that short little micro market, it's been it's been good for us. We've got a good deal. So and um, think about this too, guys. This is what everybody says. And thinking about not overthinking stuff, right? When everybody's scared, that's the time to make a move. And I feel like everybody's scared right now. I feel like there is a lot of fear yeah. in the market. The narrative has gone on way to that side. Everything that you see on social media is crash, crash, crash. Right. right? So now maybe time to make a move. You know what I mean? And start buying some stuff up. So I don't know. I know we're gonna well, talk I think about you should be here going for people's too. throats. Yeah. And my like I and with my offers, like I'm I'm going for it. Like I, I want deals on the stuff that we're underwriting. I mean, because we don't even do any of the acquisition on our wholesale side. But like I, I know we can get it because no one everyone else is scared. And so like when we are making offers, bro, I'm I'm going for it. Like I'm going for the throw. Yeah. Like, no, this is the deal I want because no one else is gonna buy it anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Our sales cycles on our leads have definitely extended out. It's the people that we're closing now are the the ones that we made these more aggressive offer to like 90, 120 days. And they're just finally starting to see the light. So I feel like our pipeline on the acquisition side is now starting to catch up a little bit. 
which I think is nice because I feel like I know Dean, you guys have a robust pipeline too. It's like all these sellers that we've been trying to convince that yesterday's price is not today's price anymore, right? They needed some time to just kind of sit in it. Then the holidays came and now finally they're coming around and they're like, okay, maybe these guys were right. So follow up's going to be key right now to convert those leads. And a quick stat for you. I was talking to one of the biggest um, wholesalers slash flippers in Colorado today. Their business picked up 300% from December to January. Wow. 300. They did. Um, so they've been doing over. Company? Yeah, like over 150 deals a year. Um, nice. And they, he was like, I was talking to our CEO because he, uh, he was going to use Call Magicians. He's like, no, bro. Like we saw a massive uptick in January. Hmm. And I talked to Warren at Zinc, and he said same thing. He said, bro, people are really sticking with those New Year's resolutions because motherfuckers are buying houses. That's yeah, good. I would say that. Me being doing, doing, doing more wholesale volume, I'm getting more calls from buyers. Not only the deals I'm sending out, like for instance, I sent one out in Bakersfield yesterday. I had 10 people who were fighting over it. Um, I can tell so you- getting over back the, to normal. Over the past six months, I'd send a deal out and I'm like, did it did it send? Like, where 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 are the messages? I'm used to my phone blowing up. Like, did did they get it? I go check. I'd be like, okay, there's thirty percent of the people have opened it already. Like, where the hell are the calls at? Um, I had to go like shout to them. But yeah, so I think buyers are reaching out more. Um, I'm having buyers call me not about deals I've sent, but also just calling me like, hey, I'm I'm ready. Yeah. When we started the podcast, I'm not joking. Got a text right here. I'm still here. Let's go get 2023, quote unquote, from this text message I'm staring at. So like buyers are are ready to go. Um, so yeah. just a quick turnaround. I mean, this is, we're talking about 30 to 60 days, a difference in people's kind of mindset towards the market. So I, I'm feeling optimistic about it. I feel there's been some pent up aggression question too because i do feel like yeah. there was this narrative of like let's just wait let's just kind of see how th things go you know what i mean and i think investors like us that are wired like we are they, they want to do deals they can only wait for so yeah. long right and they not a lot of people deals. have the runway right where they've got rentals or they've got income coming in from these other avenues right like i know all of us have money coming in from different places right, right? so maybe we can be a little bit more patient but i don't feel like everybody's got that position right so like my rentals have been performing as good as they ever have. Our Airbnbs are doing well. I've got money coming in from the brokerage side of the business. So we can be a little bit more picky and choosy. And I think some of these people are just going to have to jump back in at some point. So it'll be interesting to see how it checks out. Um, let's talk about these mortgage apps going up. I think this and well, I don't even know what the article is, but there was a jump in mortgage applications going up because the Fed dropped a rate. Like, what is it like a? quarter point or whatever yeah it was yes uh, 28 percent though, increase right? yeah in, in new mortgage applications so it's one of the biggest jumps that we've seen in the last year do you think so do you think the fed goes up again here soon and that drops again significantly or do you think that the mortgage apps are going to continue going forward everybody that i've talked to and all the stuff that i'm seeing is that we've got one, probably at least two more Fed hikes built in already. Like those Fed hikes are happening. I think it's points and then possibly 25 and, then, and nothing. I think that's the best case scenario that I've heard. But the mortgage people that I talk to in the loan industry are saying that those Fed hikes are basically priced into the rates because the market is expecting it. So I don't right. know that we're going okay. to see like okay. this huge jump yeah. in rates when those when that when the Fed makes that announcement. So what the, the most optimistic view that I think that we can have right now is that we are top, topping out on interest rates. I don't know if that's true or not. Right. And we're kind of like going to be settling in maybe with a rate that's got a six or fingers crossed a five in front of it. But Strat, I see you shaking your head. You think it's going to go higher? No, I think I mean, last year they're like, nah, bro, we're going to raise this thing until we feel like we are successful. And I I think you have to keep raising it a little bit and then. But then I do think, let's say, end of this year, they're going to start to see all those layoffs and everything else, and they're going to start dropping it pretty fast to just get some money back in circulation. Because I do think there's going to be a massive – I think it's going to be a double dip. I think the recession's like been this one, 
it'll like stagnate for a little bit. Then as soon as all that kicks back in, like I said, from all the white collar layoffs and everything else, we'll fill another one. And then that's when I think they'll start dropping it. And yeah. So Jason, you're on, on you're on the retail side. So you, you talk to mortgage lenders a little bit more and they're, they've got their, their ear to the ground and seeing what's happening. So I think the uptick in the applications is a good sign. I think it just helps to support kind of what we're thinking and seeing of the market's seen a little bit of a lull. It's going down. And some of the mar major markets have gone down a lot. Like Central California, I think it's more been kind of your stagnation type of market 100%. where it's kind of slowed down. Um, hasn't really been big drops. But I think the people that have overpriced or not priced right are the ones that are seeing you know the drops and or their properties just sitting. So yeah. Um, for, for our central California market, at least, I think it, it's a good sign to see more applications, but I, I'd i love to know the crystal ball on on the, the Fed rate hikes because, I mean, let's just call it what it is. The government has openly said they want to crash the market. They want exactly. to pull the mad bar. Yeah. They, want, they want to pull money out of the market, which they put too much in it in the first place, but that's a whole other conversation. So- they want to pull back the market. So they're increasing interest rates to slow it, cause issues. We're already seeing some of that play out. Um, do we? You said two more. So they've already openly stated they're going to do two more. Is that what it is, Jason? I think that's the expectation that's in the market right now. So they're, the hikes that we've been seeing are like 0.75 basis points. So uh, a hike, but not as big of a hike as we've seen. So 50 basis points, and then I think 25, and then maybe zero. And then we'll see and assess where we're at from there. I think that's the most optimistic prediction that I've heard, but you just never know. You know what I mean? And I think when Powell comes out and makes comments mm -hmm. like we need to see yeah. the market crash, exactly. that can be even more incendiary than anything else, than even the yeah. rate hikes, right? Because then exactly. people hear yeah. that and they're like, oh shit, you know what I mean? And so I think we've got to look at like what the number is. And then we've also got to look at like what the commentary is plus you know, other things like, you know, jobs reports and CPI and all these other, you know, all these other data points that I think everybody looks at for, uh, for inflation. But, um, yeah, I don't know, man. I think real world data for us, cause we've got a lot of flips. These last two weeks have been the most active that we've seen in probably two months, as far as showings, as far as offers, as far as just calls and activity on it. So for us, I feel like that's a good sign, at least for the central California market and the price point that I'm playing in. Um, we've definitely been more active these last two weeks. We had two offers come in this week on properties that had been sitting for, you know, 45, 60 days. So uh, overall, it's uh, trending at least in the right direction for now. I don't think, and like we're talking about all this and at the same time, I don't think it matters because we all have different tools in our tool belt. Yeah. So like if you do have sub two owner finance stuff, as long as you know how to exit the right way, you're fine. Or you structure it the right way to where like, let's say Aaron and Cletus, Bro, Cletus brings in a money partner who says, you're not getting paid until we get paid. And like you're yep. just an equity partner. And then he essentially secures his downside, right? And so he's still doing deals no matter what because he doesn't feel yep. like he has downside risk. Yep. And so it's, what is your exit strategy? You can see all this. You acknowledge it like, okay, this is what's happening. But then he's still going out doing deals. And I mean, he's operating in a completely different market than anybody else we know because he's the only one doing luxury flips. Yeah. Him and Aaron are the only ones doing luxury flips. And, they, and probably so because they do it so, so damn well. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like there's no one that does it better. But you're well, right. The way that they're structuring that is right. Because if you've got to take private money and you're paying strokes every month, then that yep. can get really scary, dude. When you're borrowing a million plus dollars, you're talking about exactly. 15, 20 grand and holding costs every single month on a one year project. Maybe some of these things take a long time. You're talking about 200 plus thousand in holding costs. That can get scary. So when you structure it the right way and you can bring somebody in, I think the willingness to adapt and the ability to adapt is important. And that's what we're doing, dude. Like we're just, we're being much more pickier with the stuff that we're closing on and the things that we are closing on, they're things that we can get in and out of really quickly. We're not trying yeah. to do anything that's going to take a long time, no fire repairs, no big projects, unless yep. it's just an absolute no brainer. You know what I mean? Otherwise we want to be in and out more wholesale, more hotel. Yep. Um, while we're doing into that, what are you guys doing different is the last thing we're going to cover before we bring on our deal champ. Um, what are you guys truly doing different now? And in, in, let's say these last 60 days and let's say going forward, we've already kind of covered it a little bit, but we'll start with you, Dino. Um, it doesn't sound like you have to call buyers anymore. 
Yeah, I'd say, you know, I think before the past six months was being really conservative on the values, being really conservative on what number I send the deals out, what I send them out at, because or I would push the numbers and would yep. get that and sell them in minutes, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but now it's like, I want to be conservative. I'll send, I, I was being conservative, was sending them out, was still getting little feedback, little, a few offers, um, but would get the deals done. But now I'm, I'm already seeing a, a bit of a surge. So I think I'm going to still be conservative. Um, I want deal movement, right? I don't want to trying to push and squeeze every little dollar out. I'm okay with leaving a little bit more on the table. If I know the deal's getting done, I'm moving it because um, if we can still move deals and make good money now deals in this bills. type of market, then just wait till it gets hot again. Like we're, yep. we're going to be the biggest on the block and um, you know, just on fire. So uh, I think just playing this smart, what I did with my marketing budget, I cut it down a little bit because I was doing a lot of extra, you know, I was doing, I want to test this out. I want to yeah. test that out. Um, let's just, let's pump direct mail. Let's just, let's just flood the market with postcards and um, you know, deals were happening. Money was being made, but as soon as things got a little tighter, scaled it back, back got really focused. So we have fewer leads coming in the door right now, but they're, they're quality. Like they are quality leads. Just this last week, our KPIs, 35 leads, not too many, 16 offers, six contracts. That yeah, was the yeah, past that's seven good. days. Awesome. Bro, that's yeah. awesome KPIs. For me, yeah. I'm stoked about that. And to me, yeah, it, yep. it, it was a proving point of we can get quality deals from the marketing we're doing by being focused, spending a little bit less and the, the money we're spending on are expensive, high quality leads, but they're performing and we're getting, we're getting contracts and deals. So, um, so that's, that's positive for me. That's what we're doing right now. What about you, Jason? We're doing very similar stuff and, and not to rehash everything, but buying deeper, being more conservative with our underwriting, right? Tightening up like what Dean was saying. I think one of the things that's been most impactful for us has been reinvesting in really dialing in our training for our yeah. acquisitions team and our processes, right? And just making sure that we don't necessarily need more leads coming in. We just need to be maximizing every yeah. single lead that comes into the door, right? Because I, we were like you, Dean. I was just like, when things were gone, we were throwing money at stuff. Leads would come in. If we miss something, it's no big deal because we're closing and we're making these yep. huge spreads. And now we're looking at it like every touch point from the second the lead comes into our system to when we have an offer out. And we're making sure that we didn't miss any opportunity. And I'm personally investing a lot of my time going in and doing sales training with my team, not just me training them, but also paying for trainings for them so they can feel confident when they're talking to sellers because you know how it is in sales. It's all a mental game. So if they're not dialed in and they feel like they're not, they don't have the tools to go over there and combat some of these things that they're dealing with when they're talking to sellers, they, they already, that half the battle's already lost. So I feel like if you don't have a big team, then you need to be investing in yourself and looking yeah. at your processes, right? And dialing in your lead intake and, and spending some extra time on training and getting better talking to sellers on the phone. You don't need to be throwing more money at stuff right now. You just need to be better at what you're doing and, and refining, I think. Absolutely. And I think, I think now, especially over the, let's say the last two quarters, when everything's slowed down, bro, you have the time to do it. Right? Yep. Like we have, it's less chaos and everything else with us. I was same thing, just willy nilly, like, yeah, bro, deals are getting done. Didn't really have to like look at the KPIs now and everything that we're doing. Obviously, we're fucking hammering on it, making sure we're getting everything there and then um, getting a lot more creative, like in call and stuff. Like we're doing a lot more affiliate and brand deals, like no like paid advertising, but like, hey, how can we get creative there? How can I get people to send me more deals on the storage side? How can I raise more money that way? And then just different partnerships to where mm -hmm. we're not shelling out a ton of cash. But we're still doing deals in whatever in whatever capacity that we can, and that's we're working that a with a lot more referrals too to agents. That was something yep. that we didn't really do much of last year, and really for a long time before that, because it would suck up bandwidth. And agents are just as hungry as we are right now, guys. And so we've probably yeah. generated last month at least eight to ten thousand dollars in just referral fees, leads that we would not have closed 
right? Yeah. Leads that my team would not that have converted. True, that yeah. we just loop into a, a a hungry agent that 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 we know, like, and trust that we can get them integrated into our system and immediately pass that lead over to them. And that's just extra money, guys. You know what I mean? And, and so we've got to be that, looking yeah. at these other opportunities to convert and bring more revenue into the company out of what we've already what we've already spent. These are leads that are already in our system, so we might as well try to convert them if we can. Hell yeah. Bro, that, that one actually is fire. Because like yep. at for a while we wouldn't send them. I'm actually gonna have our team start doing that. Because yep. like you'd have to it's another thing you gotta manage. Right. I was like, eh, we're not gonna get any money, but that bro, an extra eight thousand dollars a month, especially from the lead flow that we can get, is worth something, bro. That pays for itself. Bro, that See, agents are hurting right now, dude. I mean, think about agents right now. Like, especially the ones that aren't like hungry and like are not getting after it and doing their own lead gen. And it's very typical on the agent side of the business, when you refer something out to pay 25% referral fee, that's pretty standard, right? So on a $10,000 commission, you get 2,500 bucks just for passing a lead. That's not a bad, that's not a bad deal. If you can get a steady stream of them and find somebody yeah. that knows what they're doing. So something you should look into guys, if you're not doing it. All right, Dino, let's bring on our guest. Let's do it. Let's set the stage. Uh, this is again, guys, uh, another real estate investor in Central California, which is our local market. And he submitted his deal to, uh, to Deal Champs. And dude, this is an awesome story. So um, let's go ahead and bring him on. We got him in the show. What's up, Brandon? Yo, what's up? How y'all doing? Oh, what's up? Muted. What's up? There you go. Does the mic sound good? Brandon, what's up, brother? Nothing. Yeah, you sound good. Okay, okay, good, good. Appreciate it. And <laughs> hey, no, I appreciate the first episode. This is exciting. I appreciate the opportunity. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, dude, there's there's literally no one that we could think of for the very first episode because just weeks ago, you this deal. Um, you gave some shout outs to us, which we we definitely appreciate um, in, in our local Facebook group. Um, but dude, it was just, it had so much spirit around collaboration um, about just taking action and getting deals done. So um, I'm going to go ahead and bring up this here so we can all see it. Let's, uh, all right. So can everybody see that there? Looks good. All right, cool. So this is the deal you submitted, Brandon. We're going to go ahead and let you talk about it. But um, just at a high level, you know, this is a, a wholesale deal. Uh, the deal source was from pre-foreclosure SMS campaign. So guys, text messaging, pre-foreclosures. Pre-foreclosures from till the end of time will always be an evergreen lead source. And too many people give up on them because they're not gravy all the time. Like you got to put mm. in some work. And a lot of these people yeah. just flat out won't respond to you despite the fact they need help. Uh, the location of this deal was in Atwater, California. <laughs> And uh, the deal breakdown on this one, purchase price was $193,500. The sales price, which you'll, you'll expand on this and tell us a little bit more how this deal got done. Sales price was $255,000, which was a total profit of $61,500. And the story you shared with us, Brandon, was you had actually taught how to do this text campaign to a 19-year-old. He brought this lead to you, which you guys ended up splitting 50 50. You each made $30,750 in less than three weeks. So, dude, yeah. whoa, mama, <laughs> this is fire right here. Let's, let's right. talk about this, man. Tell us all man, about it. Yeah. So, um, I had, I've been doing um, real estate investing for like the last two years, the first year and a half, just no, no success. Before this, I was a musician. That's why, you know, some people know me as Brandon, other know me as Krim. Um, uh, the people that know me as Krim know me from my music and stuff. But That's your stage name or what? Yeah, yeah, Krim de la Krim. You can find me on all platforms. <laughs> that was like in my heyday. You know, we did a lot of cool stuff. I, I worked with like some Grammy Award winning producers like uh, Drama Boy, Scott Storch. And basically what happened is we, I just ran out of money. And being an independent artist, you need money to make it happen. So, um my brother-in-law, which Jason, I know you know him. You got all of you guys might know him. Uh, Mo, Mo Asai. Yeah, uh, that's my brother-in-law, and so he made he made a good amount of money on YouTube, um, and then he transferred that money into development and all this other real estate stuff, and, and, and really is killing it right now. So he had introduced me to wholesaling real estate. So fast forward, I um 
I was trying to make it happen, no luck. And then I, I ended up quitting getting a job. And then I hated my job, right? So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to give this another shot. And I heard a podcast that said, the, the riches are in the niches, right? And so that really got me thinking, like, all I've been doing is focusing on this vacant homes, absentee owners. I'm going to dive into a niche, and I'm not going to stray from it. Hmm. So I just picked one. I said, you know what? Foreclosures. That's, I'm just picking foreclosures. I don't care how long it takes me. I'm going to get a foreclosure deal. Three weeks later, I ended up closing a deal. I, it was a $68,000 assignment fee. And I'm like, okay, I, wow. I got this technique on foreclosures down. And so I've really just created this system that has been fail proof in the last six months. I've made six figures by myself doing this technique. And so the people in my circle were like, wait a minute, if Krim can do it, why can't I do it? Wait a <laughs> yeah, minute. that's so, right. You know, this Let's kid, go. He's actually my brother-in-law as well. And um, you guys had that meetup and me and Mo were going, we're like, hey, man, come with us. And so we go to the meetup. You guys not only inspired me, like, obviously, you guys know what you do, but what you guys did to this 19-year-old had him gassed. He was like, yo, this is for me. I'm doing this crim. Please show me. Just show me. I'll do whatever you say. Just show me. <laughs> so it was a plug and play. I plugged him in. I told him exactly what to do. We found the lead. Um, two weeks after your guys' event, three weeks after that, we ended up closing the deal, making 30K on it. Uh, peace. Wow. And so, I mean, it's... Uh, big shout out to you guys because really you guys made me the money you guys motivated them you know what i mean so um and really i got this idea from you dean with your um friends with benefits i was like wow this is a really good idea where you you're in giving people the opportunity to go find the deal and just hand it off to you and yeah. then get 50 percent. it's like how easy money is that that's easy money let me go find a deal dean will take care of it and give me 50 percent so I use that same model for this kid had no clue what he was doing. I'm like, dude, I'll do everything. I'll do the contracts. I'll, I'll get the extensions. I'll do whatever we need to do. You just send a message. Use your time to find the lead. I'll do everything. And, and you know, the rest is history. Brandon, you know what I think is awesome, bro, is that especially at the beginning, because I know you're earlier on in the journey, splitting a 60K deal and giving 30K to like a 19-year-old kid that's not the easiest thing in the world to no. do, dude. And I know a lot of seasoned <laughs> investors that would try to manipulate that situation a little bit. Right. Be like, okay, let me toss you 5,000 bucks. or let, You know what I mean? And so I exactly. think it says a lot about you, bro, about the fact that you were able to just cut that check and realize the, the investment in the long-term relationship. Because that's what that really is, dude. And realizing Absolutely. that that's going to change that kid's life and your guys' momentum together is going to go even further by doing that dude i think that's the coolest right. part of the story for and, me. and you know i'm i'm a big believer in living in a world of abundance right i had so yeah. many people my, my business partner I, I i'm originally from kansas and so all my buy and hold and stuff that i do i do in the midwest because the the prices of the house are way cheaper but rents are actually still up there right so yep. you can make a bigger passive so my business partner out there is like damn you gave him thirty thousand, huh you know what i mean like <laughs> 30,000. What do you do? He, he sent a text message. Like literally all he did was send one text message. I took it the rest of the way. He didn't even respond to the response. Right. And the reason I did that is because I'm a man of my word. And I told him, hmm. whatever you find me, we split down the middle. And so like, it's already been paid back because now that first deal motivated him, motivated him. He's already finding other deals that I'm involved with. And so it's like, it's just a beautiful thing. And I feel like if you live in a world of abundance, that thirty thousand is is minuscule to yeah. the hundreds yeah. of millions of dollars we're really trying to earn. So That's I right. want people to bring me deals. I have no problem with a random person bringing me a deal and me taking it and doing fifty percent. That's that friends with benefits. I gotta give yep. Dean a big shout out. I ain't trying to. I ain't gonna <laughs> steal the friends with benefits. But if I can help someone, help me. So why not? You know. Yeah. Well, hey, I appreciate the shout out, man. I mean, what you what what some people would believe. Right. If they have a scarcity mindset, they might believe, well, I could have sent that text message. Right. Like, oh, right. The, it might as well just been my deal. Like they did anything. But with, with, with the right mindset, the abundant mindset, like you talked about, what you did was you planted a seed. That opportunity came because you planted that seed and that opportunity came because of that. And Absolutely. if you continue with that, that mindset, there's going to be more blessings on more blessings on more blessings. And the more value you can add to more people the more that's just going to come back. I mean, we're, we're going to say that a million times 
on this podcast. There's going to be other guests that come in that believe the same thing. And it is all about giving and you will receive. Absolutely. Most definitely, so, man. What an incredible story, man. I mean, that's, that's awesome that that pretty much was sparked from that event that, you know, Jason Stratton, myself, shout out to Michael Zuber and Ty Leon Guerrero. We all co-hosted that event. And Bo. Don't um, forget Bo. And, and Bo. <laughs> um, we also had, uh, of course, our great guest speakers, Pace Morby, uh, Jamil Damji, and Henry Washington. But that was just a great inspirational event that led to, right, the whole reason we did that event was to get people together to inspire and motivate them to take action. And that led to you who had already taken action, who had already been putting in the work, right? To right. stumble across someone else that you met at the adult. Just a, just a good feel story on that, man. And really appreciate that. Uh, you shared that with us. Um, and by sharing it, that gives the opportunity for other people to be inspired by it and be willing to put themselves out there. This 19 year old kid had life changing money come into his life. Right. Like life changing. I didn't, I life. never even thought of that kind of money when I was 19. So that's it was just beautiful to see it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I knew him before the deal and just like his whole focus was like you would expect a 19 year old to be. And now to see him, like he's investing in a VA, um, big shout out to Stratton with call magicians. You know, he, we, we both went in on a VA with call magicians and, He's just wanting to invest this whole 30000 When I At first, I'm like, hey, do whatever you want with it. If you want to spend yeah. it, whatever. And at, when he, before he got the check, he's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to Cabo. Yeah, we're going to LA. It's up. You know what I mean? And when he, gets, when he got the check, though, it all switched. He's like, yo, Krim, man, honestly, help me invest this. Like, like I, I want to I go in with you. What do I got to do? You know, so he's been throwing in with buying lists for me. And we got the VA and. You know, we're doing different things. You know, he bought his own dialer. I think he's got Mojo or something. So he's taking this deal not only like motivated him to make more money, but also make smart decisions with his money. And that's the thing. You can make all the money in the world, but if you're not making smart decisions, it's going to run out. You know, I mentioned I work with the, uh, Scott Storch. We did a whole project together. You know, he's famous for spending $100 million. You know, and so a lot of people like if I had a hundred million dollars, like I'd be set for life. Would you or would you be no. an idiot and spend it like him? He had a drug addiction and blew through a hundred million. Yeah. So just because you get money don't mean you can keep money. And so that's why I really liked his story. And like to see that him getting the money, it didn't take him off the deep end, because if I had 30,000 at 19, I would have been too lit. Uh, you know, you know bro. what, bro? Think bro. about how powerful this is, Brandon. Like, and you'll realize this as more time passes and you see the maturity of this kid, right? A year, two years, five years from now, you've literally changed this kid's life. Dude, the trajectory of his entire life is going to be different forever because he met you. You guys knew each other. You went to that event. You showed him the way you guys took action and you produced this result. And now things are going to be completely different, bro. And so for you, it'll be very cool for you to see how impactful you can be on not just this kid, but other kids, man. I, I can right. I can see that and sense that energy with you that this isn't the first person that you're going to be able to impact like this, man. So I think it's really yeah. cool to see this stuff come full circle. dude. No, bro. most definitely. And that's that's what yeah. I like. I like helping people. And I've always I've always been that guy. Like, I'm just really good with the youth. And, you know, when I was younger, I was kind of in my own mess. You know, we was all we've all done our own things, whether it was in the streets with the however you was hustling, you know. And so I, I'm not even going to brag about that, but like because it's nothing to brag about. But I I didn't have like a role model or someone to show me the 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 right way, you know, and all I had was TV and movies. And mm -hmm. so that's why that's what I did when I was younger. And, you know. God bless me. And, you know, I didn't get any felonies or anything like that. But like now I'm at a point in my life, you know, I'm 33 years old. I, you know, I'm, I'm over like I'm transitioning into this, you know, business owner. And, I, you know, I'm, the music, I still do the music for fun. But like I'm really at this point where not only am I wanting to build my net worth, but I want to help as many people as possible. Because throughout my whole life, the more people I help, the more money I make. Mm -hmm. And I actually implemented that in my business when I first started the wholesaling journey, it was such a selfish journey. And so that's actually why I picked foreclosures because with foreclosures, I'm helping. Like I approach every lead. I am helping you not lose your house. Like it's not selfish. When they tell me they, they got a loan mod, I'm happy for them. 
That's, yeah. that's best case scenario. I'm glad you got along. I'm glad you're keeping your house. If you aren't able to, I'm here to help. You know, so that's why I lead with. And ever since I started leading with that, I've made the most more money I've ever made in my life. And I'm starting to affect other people's life. You know, I got some situations out in Kansas. Like I said, that's where I'm from. I got a lot of people that I'm teaching and helping there turn their life around. And so, like, this is just something I really want to do. And you guys are really an inspiration, man. That's why I'm so honored to be on this podcast with y'all. Bro, real quick. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. I want to talk about you doing it for a year and a half, not making any money and staying faithful. Yeah, let's talk about yeah. that. Yeah. Bro, nobody's <laughs> that's, that's like that. We just as over as that, bro. Deal. That is right. massive. <laughs> so, a year and a half, no fruit. None, none. So um, I remember when Mo told me about it, you know, I get on YouTube, I look up Max Maxwell and Pace and, you know, all, all the famous people, right? And so I just started taking action. I would get a, a vacant home list. And here's the thing. It wasn't that I wasn't getting leads. Like, there was this deal in Sanger, right? It was this It was this um, um, paper lots. It was like 76 paper lots. Had a tentative map. I didn't know nothing about a land deal. It was a, it was a vacant lead I called. And he's like, no. I'm like, well, you wouldn't happen to have any other property you might consider a cash offer for. And he's like, well, I do have this land. He wanted $2 million for it. I worked the lead for like 45 days, 60 days, talked him down a million dollars and had him locked in at a million, right? And so I had the deal sold. I, like I literally was about to wholesale it. I was going to make 50000 Mo was going to develop on it for me. It was beautiful. Well, then come to find out whoever bought the land, they had to um, remodel the railroad tracks right next to it, which added like $600,000 to like, you know, the deal fell through. So- there was, and I had a, a couple more deals like that where it was like I was this close and it just fell through. And I actually, during this whole time, my mom, she ended up passing. I, I moved back to Kansas to be with her, you know, and then I, I wasn't really doing, I was in and out, but more focused on her. And when she passed, I came back to Fresno. This is where my wife's from. And I just ran out of money. And so I, I, I quit the wholesale and I went and got a job at K Jewelers and then own a car like I'm an acquisitions guy like I'm a salesman I can always fall back on sales I was making great money at own a car but it just I hated my job and so my business partner out in Kansas was like yo Prim man you almost had these deals don't give up on it and so mm. that when he told me True that friend. I literally just hopped back into it picked the foreclosures and and made it happen so when I say I didn't do anything in a year and a half it wasn't like I was actually working hard because when you first start making 10, 20 calls, it's working hard. That's not working hard. Right. Yeah. Right? When, I, when I was at a car lot six days a week, 12 hour days, that's working hard. And so when I quit that, I'm yeah. like, if I just put in eight hour days with my phone on do not disturb, that's working hard. So I was making 300 calls on a single dialer a day, Ooh. sending text messages out, emails, every way you could contact hey, someone. Hey, hear that. Someone. People need to yeah, hear that to because hear too that, many bro. people will make five fucking calls and say they put in a good day's work and they're that not me. getting traction. They're not yep. getting leads. People yeah. need to hear that freaking loudly because yeah. too many people are not putting in the work it takes to got get to. momentum. And, and when you're looking to get your first deal, you got to stretch the shit out of that rubber band, man. Like right. you got to <laughs> put in that work to get that momentum and get the traction. Like, it takes a lot of effort to get just that first deal. And believe me, there's going to be plenty of people that have the stories where it was they had an easy layup deal and they just got lucky. But there's there's enough stories of people where it took them six months, 12 months, a year and a half to do their first deal. And some, some people are trying really hard, but most people are trying hard enough. And, they and I think it's important. Deal. Like yeah. you got to normalize your experience. That first yeah. year or 18 months, that's dumb, normal. Dude. That was my experience yeah. too, dude. I experience. was 12 months in before I made $1 out of real estate. Yeah. And I was working my ass off every day. So I think most people see what Dean says, right? And they see that one person that did a deal in 60 days and they think that's right. normal. That's <laughs> I don't think that that's normal, dude. You know what I mean? No, and so no, I feel I like either. I think Brandon's experience, our experiences are that that's what I think people need to know going into it because we don't get paid for our time in this business, we get paid for producing a result. And sometimes it takes time to get good at producing that result. If you've never done it before. And then if, like you, now you've got some momentum and you're now producing it faster in a shorter amount of time. And, and that's really starting to grow, dude. So I think that's what your experience is, is the natural progression for most investors. Right. And just real quick, just to add to that too, another thing that I was doing wrong in that year and a half was I was bouncing around. I think pace 
uh, he was like, the, it, real estate has a blessing and a curse. The blessing is there's so many ways to make money. The curse yeah. is there's so many ways to make money. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so I was I was calling va a vacant list for one week, 10 to 20 calls a day. And then I go to an absentee list and then I did a tax delinquent list all within a month. I'm just bouncing around like I'm barely even getting through the list. Oh, this list don't work a week later. You know what I mean? And so when I person that might work for other people, but my success was when I just picked one and it just so happened to be foreclosures. But I just picked it. It could have been probate. It could have been vacant. It could have been absentee. And I feel I would have won either way because I, it, it's all about putting the work in and sticking with something. So, I mean, that's just my experience. I, I didn't have any success bouncing around. And so when I picked one, man, that's when it really started coming together. And now I like I had no clue about how to for, uh, how a foreclosure worked. I had no clue how to get an extension. I had no, no idea. And it wasn't until my first deal where the auction was three days away. And I had to, you know, open escrow and get a signed contract and get proof of funds and send it to the loss mitigation department of the, <laughs> you know, the loan company and get their attorney's loan mitigation email and compiled it, compiled the email all on my own. I had no clue. I, I just did it. And then I yep. got the extension. I didn't even know that you can ask your uh, escrow officer to request an extension. I, it's easy now. I just whoever I got escrow open with. Hey, can you get an extension? Can you yeah, do no that? Problem. That's right. Damn, that was yep. easy. Like yep. you know, so you just learn as you go, and you just got to keep going. You know, that's if the, if anyone's watching this that hasn't closed a deal yet, it's coming. You just got to believe that it's coming because shit. It, I I gave up a few times and didn't believe in myself. Luckily, I had people that motivated me. It was like, yo, you're good at this. Like my wife, she would hear me on the phones, and she's like, yo, people love you. People love talking to you. I'll be on the phone with a grandma for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> and, and she said, and at, by the end of the call, I'm like, hey, next time I call, I'm going to call you grandma. OK, OK, <laughs> like, that's, that's how I am on the phone. And so my wife even told me, like, you are good. You got to keep going. And then my business partner, hey, you were so close. So it is good to have a supporting cast. But even yep, if you, you have don't, to you gotta be your own supporting cast. Yeah, yeah. that's right. I think you got to have the self-motivation. If you're only relying on outside sources to motivate you, it's going to be really hard or almost definitively you're going to fail. If you can't be internally motivated yourself and put in the work on days that you don't want to, it's going to be a grind and it's going to be hard. Absolutely. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, like, that's what it takes. That's what it takes. And I think I can tell right now, just hearing and talking with you, spending more time with you, like, you're, you, you're authentic. And I think people see that and feel that. And uh, just props to you, man, on everything that you've done so far. I'm excited to see your journey. I'm excited to see you continue. I mean, the one thing that I would say to you is just continue to be you and can continue to add value to other people. Because I think once myself, Jason, Strat, once the light bulb went off, the more we help other people, the more the universe just brings that back to us. We, right. We've gone all in on that, man. And, mm. it, and it's so rewarding to help other people. Like you just blessed a 19 year old with $30,000. That's incredible, man. So um, we appreciate you coming on, man. We appreciate Absolutely. you submitting your deal. Uh, what a great story. And uh, we're happy to have you on for the first podcast, man. It's been it's <laughs> That's been an awesome, awesome first yeah. deal champ, dude. That's going to be a tough one to beat, dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah somebody's like, going to have to come this with, a, one, man. It's a good with a strong story to be branded, dude. I love it, man. That's awesome, bro. That's what's but up. everyone's hey, got man, a different story, deals man. In the pipeline. I always make sure when I do get a deal, you three received the deal before anyone. Stratton, I know you've helped me on a couple of deals. We tried to get some in. It didn't work out. It's all good. I got more on the way. Uh, Dean, my first deal, I didn't even know Home Helper's body. I, I was dealing with Luis, your business partner. Oh, okay. And, and, you know what I mean? So, and Jason, you know, I send you deals that's too. Hilarious. So, look, I'm going to keep Yeah, we we'll get there. It's just a numbers game, bro. That's so, it. I'm yeah, good. that's it. Yeah, just a numbers game. So, but yeah, much love, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Thanks so much for being on. And uh, for anybody watching it, I mean, I'm sure you were inspired by this story. Uh, make sure to send some love. I know some people have had some great comments here. If you're watching this after hours, make sure to send some love in the comments. Make sure to connect with Brandon um, because that's what it's all about. It's all about connecting together. So, um, And if you've been inspired by this, you have a similar story. Make sure to submit your story. We'll be posting the deal submission link all over the place so that if you guys have a similar story that you want to share, we'd love to have you on the podcast. All right. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Appreciate you guys. Thanks, Brandon. All right, yep, everybody. Yep. Much love. Take care. Bye.